Are you ready? I am ready. John Packman Podcast, Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, beautiful downtown Portland, Connecticut. Come over the bridge, go through one set of lights, pull a Yui, park in front of the street, in front of the street. Park in front of the street. Park in the street in front of the uh, music store with the red neon light. What one, a mess. one of those places. Yeah. I'm a total mess today. Like and subscribe. Um, be on the show with me. You know what I mean? Rob DeSorbo's doing it twice. Uh, this is the second time. Rob DeSorbo. Round two. Bass player extraordinaire. Uh, Been here before. He's back again. I'm back again. Back again. Uh, you can have your own podcast here too. <clears throat> In our beautiful studio, Dave will tell you how. But not now. Dave will tell you how at the end. <laughs> on a recording. Yes. Right, exactly. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, there he goes. Remember to like and subscribe. Oh, I already said that. Yeah, okay. like and subscribe. Yeah, definitely. And don't forget the merch. That's right. The, and the merch. We have merch. It's too late for Christmas. As, as a matter of fact, I, 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 I drank out of my John Peckman mug this morning. That's Did you really? That's what made me think of you. Uh, hey, see uh, what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. You see what I mean, kids? Yeah. It's real. It this is real. It's a real thing. Yeah, well, I opened the cabinet, and there it was, and I was like, you know, I usually Cobwebs <laughs> all up in it. You're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I killed the spider that crawled out of it. Really? <laughs> well, Rob, yeah. bass player been around uh hosting the the fabulous open mic extravaganza at the pine loft yep. a literal stone's throw from my house you gotta grab your dulcimer and come down yeah my problem is all my songs are 30 seconds long that's, that's fine you do seven so, yeah maybe so. that, that would be i don't think i know seven things yet i don't know seven things you can jam with the people that are there i w well i don't know can they play in D? I know, th I know three chords on that thing. Right. That's it. Yeah, that's okay. it. But whatever. Yeah. I appreciate you, the offer, but I don't know if I'm ready. Well, whenever you get a chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always there. Come beat a drum. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. Pine loft. Like I literally could throw a stone. Yeah. You know, I've walked. You I walked there. I've walked there to get there. Just the once. Yep. Well. Wow. I'm just kidding. That you know of. Yeah. I walked down there to, s to b the blues thing. There was a blues thing on Sunday. I oh, did you get? Did you make I it walked. to the last one? I don't remember which one I was at, yeah. but. <coughs> I, I, and I'm speaking of that, we, you know, Mike Law and, the, and Nick were here. I, I loved that interview. That was a good one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun interview to, to watch. Yeah, killer. Yeah. Either way, you know, you know, I was gonna. I kind of gave it a little thought today because you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, interview a you maybe a little bit, but, oh. but you know, like one of the first moments that that triggered my whole musical experience, and I don't know if this happened. I think it happens to everyone that becomes a musician, you know. And it was like 1960 something, and the old man used to let us stay up late, and we're watching Johnny Carson, and Jack. This is right after Jack Parr. Okay. Finish Johnny Carson, and and um, Roy Clark comes on, Ooh. and he starts playing "Somewhere My Love" either mm -hmm. on a, like a twelve string or a mandolin or something, and I I was just you know like four years old, yeah, and I just remember going, "What was that? Yeah, why did that? what 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 just what was that rush that came over me that was like oh my god what was this intense feeling that I had and then from that point forward it's like. When I started to listen to music, certain things would just grab you, yeah, and make you feel that way. And it's like, oh, this is cool, yeah, you know. And and um, it it brings it out of the heart where it comes from, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. I think that's true, yeah, yeah. And I used to plunk around on a broken guitar that my brothers. I was a youngest of five. Oh wow! So there was always like a guitar with like three strings left on it. Yeah, right. And right. I'm, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you then, got. And you know, listen to all the stuff that they, you know, my oldest brother's 10 years older than me. Oh, wow. So, and he saw Hendrix. He saw Hendrix at, like, he said the first time that Hendrix came to RPI Fieldhouse, nobody was really there. I don't know where that is. In Troy, New York. Oh, okay. Okay. And he grew up in Schenectady. And um, he said the second time Hendrix came, you could not get near the place. Yeah, right. A right. billion, billion people. This is before Hendrix was w well known at all. Sure, but he has some stories that you know you should interview him sometime. Yeah, maybe. It's hilarious. Yeah, it's just it's just funny because yeah, the yeah. stuff that he saw and, and grew up, you know, with. Yeah, I bet. 
So I grew up with their record collections. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and they moved on. They left all the stuff behind. And and my oldest brother used to get a, a, a LP, and he would p- put it onto a reel-to-reel. Oh. So it wouldn't crack and pop anymore. Oh. Yeah, so that I was it. Yeah. I remember finding some of those reel-to-reels concert for Bangladesh. Oh, yeah, sure. He had that. That was one of the reels I found of his. Wow. That was like, wow. So that's how you would do it, so that you didn't Back run the record. So the record was just, you run it once? You run the record once, record it onto a reel-to-reel, and then you never, you put the record away. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that was a thing. That was a thing in, in some other character that we knew. And this is, you know, 60-something. You know? Yeah. But, um, oh, here's another one, too. One of my cousins, she took me to somebody's basement one time and these guys were playing like grand funk and stuff and i remember being like I don't know, seven eight years old and it was freaking loud yeah, yeah you know and one of the regular basements not a finished basement just a raw cement freaking yeah the room. furnace is vibrating oh yeah and everything and and it was funny because you know that's the first time i've ever seen like like big amps and all this kind of stuff so yeah it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, this is cool. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You want to rock out. Exactly. Yeah. So from Roy Clark to rocking out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I hear you. What was your What was your thing that caught you, though? You know, oh, man. Did you ever get that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I always say the first thing <clears throat> that I ever remember really noticing was the drum break on Birthday by the Beatles. Bat, 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 bat. <laughs> Back, I used to ask my parents to put that on. Oh. <clears throat> and then I remember my <clears throat> sorry, my dad had a Temptations greatest hits. And I remember the way you do the things you do. No. Oh. That song. Okay. And if you listen to it even now, when the horns come in, you can kind of hear the room sound on the horns a little bit. Yeah. And there was something about that that got me really excited. Huh. And I would ha- I would get up and do a dance routine. Yeah, yeah. to that tune so th- I, those were the things and then beach boys too yeah my mom had um i don't i don't think it was pet sounds i think it was smiley smile which was like a huh. it was almost like a not a kid's record but it was like goofy enough to be a kid's record and i just remember that's funny one yeah and i just was like wow this is really cool i i don't know how to explain it yeah. There was all the f- Dick had the Beach Boys records in the 409. Yeah, yeah. Concert, uh, live concert. And, yeah. And a few others. Uh, sure. In fact, recently I, I, I learned in my room. Oh, yeah. Just as a goof. So yeah, to yeah. To learn yeah. the song because yeah. it's an interesting. Yeah, it's a cool mellow tune. song. <laughs> well, Smiley Smile is weird. It's a really weird record. Yeah. And yeah. I just remember the feeling of being out in the yard because we had a really, you know, kind of lot of trees. And you'd be playing, and the the sun would be on you, and then the wind would blow, and the trees would go over you, and then suddenly you were in the shade. Huh. Oh, okay. And then yeah, you were yeah. in the sunshine. Okay. And that feeling, I equated it with the sound of that record. Because huh. the record would go kind of like, uh, 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 you uh, know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, this must be what this song is about. Okay. So somehow that feeling. Well, it's funny how uh, yeah we talk about that how people interpret what they want out of certain songs. Yeah, you know the the lyrics might mean something to the person that wrote it, but everybody has their own kind of little little hidden meaning that they might find in, inside of that. Yeah. So that's what's interesting about um, written, uh, uh, yeah, right. original music anyway. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, you never know. Yeah, what people are gonna get from it. Yeah, it's like the. Um, yeah, we'll talk about my CD since we didn't te- talk about that. Um, um, it turned into a project that I didn't expect. I didn't expect to do what I did because COVID kind of twisted things around. Sure. So I ended up g- going in a direction that I really wasn't planning. And um, at the same time, though, like there's one song on there and somebody goes, oh, that, that's exactly like one of the covers that whatever somebody does. And I'm like, no, nah, it's original. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, right, right, right. Just because it, it's those three chords, you know, yeah. those, the, the three magic chords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's cool. But either way, um, I brought in other people that uh, um, I tried to, like I would bring somebody in that was had an intention at first, and okay. then I would throw them the curveball and say, oh, I want you to try this, 
and play this song, you know, something that I was working on. So let them interpret that way. Sure. And it's funny because you got the results you wanted out of people, even though they were like, I don't play that style. Right. And it was kind of cool to, to <clears throat> give somebody like, well, try it. And they were like, okay. And, and they made it work. And yeah. Yeah. Like, oh yeah. my God. You know, and it's like um, on, on one of the songs I, I wanted the drummer to do the conga parts kind of intentionally because I knew he'd be a little busier with his, his first time around. So yeah. I said, do the conga parts first and the bongo parts first. Then, yeah, do, right. then go back and do the drums. Oh. So he was fitting his drums into what he played on, right. on the other drums. Right. So instead of the other way around, right. which could be, you know, it can work either way. But you being a drummer, you would kind of like, sure. you know, kind of know. And I wanted the same person. Right. You know, they can and, walk to and, each other. And, and back to that, themselves. giving them an opportunity to play something that they already knew they were coming in to do, but then saying, oh, you know what? Since you're here, yeah, right. I, right. Knew, I had this plan, you know, pre-planned in my mind. I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna bring this person in and give them, give them the curveball. Uh oh. So and now I know what to expect. To let's just able... see what the kind of results you get too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yeah. it worked out uh, in, in a good way for both people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, that's cool. Do but, you know? Do you know Jim Chapdelaine? Yes, I do. So when I, I met him, years I start, ago. started working with him years ago, and uh, you know, we made a lot of local records. And we kind of had a thing going for a while, me and him, you know, we kind of like had this thing. Yeah. And he would say that. He would say to me, um, I don't even know if he would say this in front of the client all the time, but sometimes he'd be like, listen, I want to try something. He goes, I don't want you to, don't play the first thing you think of. Don't yeah. play the second thing you think of. <laughs> I want to hear the third thing. Oh, wow. Like, don't, Yeah. I, I want to hear something that you've never done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Go, go three layers deep Be, yeah, okay. on this one. Just well, he see. knew John Blumenfeld, and John Blumenfeld was uh, one of those okay. people, too, that would get yeah. that kind of thing out, out yeah. of people. Yeah. yeah. But I, n I never had anybody direct me like that before. Usually just like you're lucky if you get through it and nobody even knows enough. But I think yeah. because he's so quick, he already heard my bag of tricks. It's like, I don't want to hear anything out of your bag. Well, you worked, you worked with him enough, so he knew... Yeah, I think by then he... He already, knew your ins and outs, and, yeah. and he tried to and pull something else out of you. Yeah. Yeah. But it is cool. You it know, is. when I was like, all right, yeah. I don't even know what that means, but let me think about it. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, you it's just, like, um, I worked with this guy, Mike Foster, and Lefty Foster's sure. brother, and, and this is back in the 80s, and uh, he had a defined way of he was going to do these songs, you know? But... He said, embellish enough, you know? So he would be like, I like that, but I don't like, you know? And that kind of direction helps you f model yourself into how to work with other people sure. and, and all that kind of stuff. So <clears throat> he, he was sometimes very strict, and other times he was like, no, nah, just, and, and that's great. So it's like, you know, you, you hit his nerve. So if you could strike a nerve with, with inside of somebody's thinking, yeah, yeah. you know, then, then you're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's always fun. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, try to second guess yourself. Well, that's the other thing, too. Um, when we went to go record, we were so polished that we just went in and played the songs twice. Yeah, e right. Each song twice. Boom. Done. Yeah, and yeah, we yeah. were done. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, and he went back in and to do, like, additional guitar stuff the, the same day. And, and the engineer, he's like, I, he's like, I don't want to hear what I played on the other tracks. I'm just going to play. Right. And the engineer looks at me, he goes, this is going to take forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes in and he does it. Huh. Same thing with the vocals. He's saying, he goes, I'm going to add an uh, additional vocal track, but I don't want to listen to what I sang the first time around. Right. And I'm sitting there going, and this engineer, same thing. And he was just that good. And there was one spot that he, inflection a little bit different. Yeah. But that's the only falter that he did when he did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there going, you know, he just knew it so well. Yeah. And we were so well rehearsed that we only had to, we were not in the studio that long. We spent more time mixing it than we spent yeah, right. playing it. Right. Well, I guess that's a thing. It, it can be. Yeah. But it, other times you want, um, it's not that, it wasn't that type of music where you want the spontaneity of jazz or, or the improvised moments that you were like, oh, thank God we were recording those <coughs> improvised moments because they are lost. Yeah. And I had my deck. And I'd hit the, uh, I had a studio set up at home with the DA38. Sure. Know, just recording trio stuff. 
But it was cool because, you know, you hit tape, you forget it's on. It runs for almost two hours. Oh, I see. You go sift yep. through it later, you know, all the jokes and all the this and that yeah, yeah. in between. But at the same time, you know, um, a couple songs came out of that that were original songs that it would, yeah. it would have been gone. And if you didn't record it, you, the words would have been gone, all that. Yeah, right, right. So, Wow, that is interesting. It is. Right. Yeah, that's funny. I know you think about it sometimes. You go <clears throat> that great songwriters are like i shall now write a song you know what i mean i don't or, know how they do that or, you know? or else yeah. they, like you say just record everything and then go sifting through for a thing well you know especially with with like jams and instrumental music mm -hmm. you know you can get these bits and pieces and you go oh okay we, we sure. can build off of this that was a really cool thing and we can ma mate that with this and that and you orchestrate that way sometimes which yep. was the hard way yep Nowadays, you just go in and take the jam and cut, yeah. and, cut and paste the pieces you well, want. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I have a way that I teach a, a concept that I try to teach <clears throat> that I use all the time. I don't know if there's a parallel with in any other instrument. Yeah. But with drums, I look at it like a, dr like a drum kit is a collection of voices. Everything is a different voice. Mm -hmm. So... I figured when you go to play a lick, um, there's these layers. There's the rhythm that you're going to play. Yeah. There's the sticking, which means the limbs, the left, right, and left. Okay. Then there's the voicing of what you're hitting. Yeah. And then there's the dynamics, you know, of accents or not. Yeah. But I always I try to teach my kids sometimes, like, you go into creative mode, and I'll play a lick without thinking about it just the first lick off the top of my head. And if I like it, I'll go, okay, cool. Let me work it out. Now let me just keep the sticking the same, but revoice it, hit different things <laughs> yeah, yeah, in your yeah. mind. You're still playing the same lick, but you're just physically hitting a different thing. And you know, more than half of them sound stupid, but if you can keep your head together and keep the sticking the same and change the voicing, you can come up with, three different versions of the same lick that you just exponentialize your thing. Yeah, because you're not using the same drum over and over again. Right. Yeah, and but each like, drum is an instrument in itself, so. Right, right, right. How but, you attack that yeah. each time. But I guess it's like what we're saying is like to sift through, like I figure if a lick is going to come through the cosmos to me, yeah, right. that's, that's cool enough. But the next is how do I work this? to get as many different variations out of it as I can. Oh, okay. Yeah, to yeah. In just increase the amount of... So I guess what we're talking about is the creativity versus the sifting through. Yeah. And it's like both. Yeah. You know? I don't think sifting through doesn't create something, but sifting through will save, will save something. You'll find something in there, in there that yeah. might lead you to something else. Well, it's interesting. Like, when I went to do the CD, it was interesting to have people play, like, different solos mm -hmm. different times around and then take the sections that you liked and yeah right and you know and then you got to go back and learn how to play it that way <laughs> yeah right right because right. <laughs> it's not how you know, and but the thing is it, it, it these days you can make it sound natural uh -huh. which, which is it, it sounds very natural it sounds sure. like that's what exactly what the way they play yeah. it and it's kind of yeah. kind of weird to do that well. In the old days, you we, uh, the scariest thing I, I ever saw was somebody do is cut a tape. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, you're like, like yo. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I can cut the tape here. Uh, it's like, are you crazy? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cut the tape. <laughs> yeah, cut the tape. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. yeah, well, that's all we're doing now is cut tape, except there's no tape. Except there's no tape, exactly. And there's also undo. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. that's the other thing too. You can un you can't undo that cut. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, once you've done that, like I had to, I got really good at mini disc editing. Okay. Because uh, that's what was what was the tool I had. But uh, I was good because I I could take like oh the ending on this one this version is better than the other ending, so mm -hmm. I was able to take it and move it. And that was like by ear dialing in this little dial back and forth until you got it right. But it worked, and it sounds seamless. Yeah, man. Whatever yeah. it takes. Whatever it took to, to get the job done. Well, yeah. as, as usual. Yeah. And those are just tools. Well, if you don't have the yeah. idea or the vision or whatever in the first place, yeah. the tools don't do it. I mean, don't you remember like when we were young, when people were making music on, we first heard about 
synthesizers or computers. You go, what's a computer playing the whole thing? It's like, no, it doesn't. You have to still. You still have to play it. Well, you still have to compose something. The computer doesn't have a song inside of itself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that, yeah. Funny. I had, I had another thought and I lost it, but that's, you know. Uh -oh. As we get older, our train of thoughts gets shorter and shorter. I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. All right. So what do you have going on now that's different from last but, time you were here? Well, Better Than Bad, Lisa, Rich, and I, we play together. Right. We're, we're doing the Better Than Bad thing, and that's a duo. But cool. We're actually, you know, we're, we're um, playing a couple convalescent home things hey man hey no but uh, and i got the pine loft thing going mm -hmm. and uh famous jane you got to come see famous jane one night yeah we're playing on uh, january 20th uh where are we i have to look in my phone but oh boy uh, the, the event will be on facebook okay like every other event yeah 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 and yeah. i play with aaron Troy danner mm -hmm. on a, a couple of gigs here and there yep and that's pretty much where that's going yeah. Uh, Terry and Rob Duo were keeping the uh, <clears throat> Buttonwood alive. The Buttonwood is going to be closing for a couple months. Oh, boy. But we're going to keep the uh, Monday night uh, open mic going. Okay. One way or another, there's different hosts that do that. So okay. we're going to keep that going. It was just there the other night. Why, what's going on over there, can you say? Well, the, um, when Anne Marie, you interviewed Anne Marie, and, and when Anne Marie left, the, the place kind of. People didn't realize how much work she put into that. Mm -hmm. and, you know, she covered the ground of like four or five people. Yeah, right. Sure. And, and she, I don't know how she did it. Yeah, right. It's like it's like trying to figure out how my mom, you know, right, put, put the eighteen five, hour yeah, yeah, day yeah, yeah. and and, yeah. and and still raised us and all that kind of stuff. It's like, huh? Right. E either way, so you know, uh, things are just changing over there. Okay. So. They're trying to um, bring in new ways of generating some money into okay. the place. So that I think she was really good at figuring those things out. Wow. And, and uh, she was like a team leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the team may have fallen apart a little bit. Oh, boy. But they're pulling it together. Yeah. You know, they got to. They have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The place is, uh, I can't imagine. They were looking for an executive director. That's a point out for a. they were at the time for a little while mm -hmm. someone said i should do it i said no nah, I, I can't uh, dedicate that much time it's oh really it's a job it's too not, much yeah oh yeah 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 i can't imagine wow it's like trying to book i don't do any booking so yeah right like, yeah, i'm trying trying to learn how to do that a little bit right but because yeah it's just it's a, full it's, time. A mis it's a mystery to me yeah well <laughs> kind of me too you know I like the phone rings and you go, are you available to play this date? Or, you know, you yep. get a text message, are you available for this date? And yep. look in the calendar quick and you go, boom. Yep. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Yep. So yep. how's your calendar doing? You're pretty slow? Oh, I got nothing. I'm not playing with anybody. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. I just nothing. ran into somebody at the Pine Loft the other w last week. And she says she's taking voice lessons from Christine Allman. Oh, hey, cool. Yeah. That's cool. So that's cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that was your thing. That was. That's, yeah. Yeah. That was you did a few of those. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it'll come back around. I just don't, I don't, I don't really mind, but I don't. Yeah. I don't well, think what do you think is going to happen in 2024 for us as, as citizens well, and, and musicians in general? Good Lord. Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm not in the, I'm not playing yeah. gigs. Yeah. So I don't, I don't gigs. know what's going on out there. I yeah. really don't. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I know that at least for me. As a drummer, um, if I wanted to work with any kind of regularity, I would probably have to be in some kind of duo, and my hands hurt mm -hmm. just thinking about it because I don't want to be beaten on a on a bongo. Jambe. Well, yeah. I did for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, for years. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't even play drums. I was that guy. But when you don't do that for that long, I'm just like, oh man, I don't know if I want to wear something over over my shoulder and and beat it and smack. I always it with my wondered hand. about that. Um, uh, Jamie, I forget his last name. He used to sit in with Bert Teague. Sure. Okay. And you know who he is. Yep. You know, he, a great conga player. Yeah. Yep. Man, he had his, you know, his fingers are taped sure. at every gig, you yep. know, there's oh, yeah. like taping your fingers up. is like a boxer, you know, or yep. something. You, you yep. know, tape your fingers up. And I can't imagine, I, you know, one night just screwing around, I oh, had yeah. some fun. My fingers were stinging and, you know, I'm like, oh my God, how yeah. do these guys put up with that for we, an hour well, and a half? You don't. You you do 
when you're young or you you know or your life or I've been out of it too long that I'm just like I don't want to be a percussionist anymore. Okay. I mean, I may have to or get in some band situation. You want but sticks though instead of well, bare hands. You need a bass player, and now you're a three piece band, and mm, you're a four right. piece band. You're not yeah. going to get a gig. Exactly. Well, that's that's so, the other thing too. You know, the bass is you know taking its toll on my, on my hands. Yeah. And uh, every once in a while, people on Facebook will post pictures of their fingers, you know, and yeah, the kids yeah, that yeah. are learning and, and they, you know, they got the blisters that blow out and they got blood all over the base and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. You just have to learn how to get through that. I'm, I remember my first blisters and stuff. And yeah, me too. You finally learn that don't pop it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. just wait for it to yeah. fix itself. Yeah. Or no. rip the skin off and just suffer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? Yeah, no, I know. That's like I had a student... Um, and it was difficult because the kid complained too much about pain. Yeah. And I was like, wow, man, I don't ever remember thinking about that. I remember being in pain <laughs> and, you know, I remember, I remember getting cramps and yeah, sure. it was, yeah, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, this yeah. is killing me. Yeah. And I'm like, that's just, just the figure that's part of doing it one of these days. And then when I went to heart, yeah, that's what's, here's a good one. You know, you, you play, 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 and you learn how. A, a crappy technique yeah and then all of a sudden you get thrown into this pool of oh god your technique is horrible yeah, yeah wow well, yeah sure. you need to fix this <clears throat> and we're going to take upright technique no, and but. we're going to apply it to electric bass and you're going to play it on upright but when you get home what do you have to practice on yeah on electric right. bass right so but it was it, it was just a, a painful painful thing Oh, you know, I, yeah, yeah. for years sure, I was always sure. choking the neck like a sure. chicken and I'm going, oh God, you know, you're supposed to be yeah. totally different form. So it's like, oh. and, and here I am playing gigs and this is like messing with my head because I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. fight, fighting yeah. with my own physical aspect of trying to fix this while I'm playing the gigs. And, and eventually you just say, you know what, I got to get through the gig. Right, right. Yeah, you know, so I'm just going to play and I'll go home and work on that and work on that until it gets better. Yeah, yeah, that's always where I bottom out. <clears throat> with <clears throat> I mean drumming I can do anything that I want to do at this point yeah with no pain you know I'm just like you yeah know, if, if it's gonna hurt me to play it I'm just not gonna take the gig I mean like who cares but um when it comes to stringed instruments like because I started on bass and I just couldn't I couldn't use all my fingers I just I didn't make that leap I just quit before uh, I got oh, there okay so you know, now that I get back into it after years, I play. I still am like, yeah, well, you're you never figured that out, yeah. so you're right back. So you can't play that. You know, yeah. I go to play something, and I'm like, I can't. You still can't. I still can't do it. Well, here's a here's a which one. is why I play drums. You know, huh. I just said I, this is not my thing. I yeah. don't. I can't. Drums came too easily to me. Yeah. To, and I just did that. But like with bass, I'm right back where I started. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to execute certain things because... Well, that's like I picked up a banjo and it's like nothing like, yeah. you know, yeah. nothing like feeling like a beginner all over again. Trying right. To, trying right. To, you know, like when you yeah. first set your hands on the dulcimer, you're going, oh, yeah. what am I going to do with this thing? Now it's like, here's a good one. Um, in 1978, I split my index finger. Uh, wide open so Whoa. i played bass with three fingers thank god i wasn't playing the five string Whoa. so i played bass with three fingers for a year and it took me a year to get it to work again I hate so here i was playing with three fingers for, hey, that's for, uh, on, on, yeah. but that actually improved my right hand yeah right so you know but it was it was funny because i, I you know my finger was at the point where when I first started using it again, it was like, ah, 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 I kept hitting this one spot. Ah, ah, ah. And just like, <clears throat> after a while, I was just like, you know what? Stop screaming. Just, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't bother, don't bother saying anything. Just, yeah. just suffer. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And drummers that bang, I mean, I, I used to play with a drummer when we were kids and he would get a little wasted. So he'd be banging his knuckles on, oh, the, yeah. on the snare drum. Sure. Like that. That, that can happen. Yeah, freaking hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Those are occupational hazards. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, I was watching uh, Barbara Wiggins, and she yep. was having her issues. I can't, yeah, yeah. I can't imagine that. You know, you got to hold the violin without holding the violin. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Can you imagine? Yeah. It seems like that clock is ticking when you do, when that's, you, when that's where you have to start. Yeah. Just to play your instrument is the, is the, cock your neck like in some weird 
That doesn't sound like you could do that forever. Like to get over that pain. But the thing is back to not recognizing it as pain. Yeah, sure. Just like I passion for this. Oh, here's here's another good one. You know, people say their hands are too small and all these kind of things. About mm-hmm. The bass teacher that I had at Heart School of Music, he had the tiniest little hand. And he was playing a full size upright. The thing was, he would, he was wow. reaching over his head yeah. to itch, hit the F note. Huh. And I'm like, this guy's amazing. And he had the tiniest little hands. Wow. And I'm like, oh my God, Ron, I can't remember his last name for the life of me. Huh. Um, and I've always struggled with that because I know I had it written down in a book that I lost. Oh, boy. You know, one of the books that he had me yeah, write, yeah, you know, yeah. the books that he lived out of. And um, I'm mad because I lost that set of books um, at the same time. Where was I going with that? Yeah, the, just the struggle of the physical aspects of playing an instrument. Yeah, you don't think of it when you're learning it, and now, yeah, like me raising the bass up higher. Yeah, it looks uncomfortable, but for me, it's comfortable. When yeah. I drop it down, it actually feels wrong and it hurts. Yeah, right. And, right. and it's like one yeah. night I, I played somebody else's bass, and yeah, I just used my bass, and it was like hanging down a little low. And the next morning, I had this thing in, the, yeah, in my yeah. shoulder, I'm like, oh man, yeah, right. I need, I needed it there. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I guess we just we do what we got to do. Well, people have their own way of getting around uh, a <laughs> technique, right? Which you know, in a perfect world, yeah, you want to have better technique. But yeah, I have all kinds of workarounds. All my technique is whatever. But that's the thing. I beat myself <sighs> until I had good technique. Yeah, technique is ninety percent of your sound. Yeah, ninety nine percent of your sound, as yeah. far as I'm concerned. Yeah, just but if you don't have anything to to th- to play well if you don't have anything to say then right, yeah, right. Exactly. Doesn't matter. yeah right. i'll figure out how to say it that's like the guy the guy i gave you the drum books from john blumenfeld was an amazing drummer and and just an amazing person too yeah yeah but um and we used to drive each other nuts with these things that we would just just do t- 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 just to drive each other crazy <laughs> you know um play something and then start playing it as fast and fast as faster 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 you know until it just falls apart you can't yeah, yeah. go that any longer and you know jam that last 20 minutes you know yeah. or something like that yeah but um he he was good at, at pulling those things out of you and uh oh uh, yeah yeah you would have loved him because he had the ringo kit oh oh um, really oh yeah um yeah it's sad because um yeah, I didn't know him. Yeah, yeah. I was just talking about him the other day. There's somebody at the one of the bars that I work at. He is a was a um, a rudimental drummer from back in the day, and he, and he's starting to figure out that I'm a drummer, and I don't really yeah. want anybody to know. Yeah. And he's like, "Oh, hey, I have uh, I have like a rudimental. I forget what it was, but it was like a famous book from the '40s or whatever." I said, "I probably have it." Yeah. Because I got a pile. You know, oh, from, yeah. from a, a dude, you know, I came in to teach and there was a box yeah. and I went through all of them. And there's some of those are from the 20s. Some oh, of the books that he had. Well, I know he you had. Know, my, I ha- and those I have are from them. His I filed dad. them. Some of those are from his dad. Right, right. Yeah. So I have those in a special place next to my kit. There's yeah. I have. Yeah, I got like I, I got a drawers you know like yeah the little utility yeah. table yeah and then the drawers they're all there well, you know what i should give you this one thing that he left behind and it was one of those it was a music case i guess it would be oh wow it's um you know it just has a front door with this knob thing mm-hmm. you know you push the knob and you open the door yep. and it's just little slots for sheet music perfect or or lps or whatever yeah yeah, supposed to, whatever, what, yeah yeah and i have it sitting in the corner and uh, i got one well, I sh- I, you know, like like you probably need more stuff like I do. Well, yeah, but I bought I bought a plastic one from Target. Oh, God. I mean, if that was this is an this, antique. This, this is will like go, yeah, I will use. This it. is more more your thing. And I, I and I had another thing sitting in my bedroom. I almost grabbed it for you. Wow. But I said this guy probably needs another drum, like a hole in the head. <laughs> wow. But I have a snare drum, and I I figured yeah maybe this is it's a Ludwig, but it's missing the this the mechanism sure so there's no snares and sure. no stuff but it's one that john refinished uh-huh. it's one of his drums wow and he his dad had he refinished his dad kit and it was a this was a long time ago he probably wasn't a good idea but at the same time a 46 1946 slingerman kit oh oh yeah there we go not very nice yeah and and I think this was there's a Ludwig snare drum that was with that kit. Oh, yeah. What's the weird. what's the finish? John 
stained it like kind of a, like a red natural wood. Oh wow! Yeah, so it's kind of mahogany ish looking yeah, thing. I, I should, never know. I should bring it to you. Just, you know, or whatever. It's got good heads on it. Yeah. Still. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Oh, you would have loved the collection of snare drums that I inherited from John. It yeah. Kind of kind of sad. Um, a radio king. A. I ended up. I ended up. You know, with this pile of snare drums sitting in my house. I'm like, oh man, I get. I get. I actually tried to give some of them away, and people were like, oh, you you. You can't just give that away. Yeah, right, right. You know? Yeah. So I'm just yeah, selling fi- it. Figure that out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Figure it out. But I had a, what's well, an Aerodyne Ludwig, that metal thing. Yeah. Came in a plastic. Yep. Sold that. Cool. Um, oh, Ry Cooter. Mm. Bought an uh, Aug. What is it? R- something in Aug. Tell me more. Oh, yeah. I'm I don't trying, know what you mean. Uh, uh, it's a, a drum. Okay. I'm trying to think of what's the first word. Damn it. I hate it when I get like this. Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Brian and Aug or something. No, it was not. I'm thinking something else. But either way, it was a. Uh, had the gut snares. Uh huh. Okay. 1900. Oh. Drum. This 1900s drum. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. And, and I put it on on uh, something and John looked at me years ago and he, he goes you know I think this drum's going to be worth something someday and it's like you know I think it's worth like four or five grand and I'm like looking at him like yeah right yeah man. yeah whatever and this and that but either way I, and I had the pile of drums and I said you know he said it was worth something so I'll sure. put it on uh, Reverb and I listed it for 2500 bucks and Ry Cooter bought the drum for $2300 hey there you go yeah, I mean, and then this was funny because I get um, yeah, yeah, I get a uh, check in the mail in November, and I had sold the drum in April. Wow! I'm like, ah, oh. and then I look at the amount, and I'm going, oh, this is crazy. So I call the place that sent me a check. I said, this, this is for a drum that I've already been paid for. Yeah. And they go, yeah, oh. I go, well, who's the guy? You know, I don't know who Ry Cooter was for some reason. It didn't click with oh, me. Oh, wow. So I go, yeah, g- g- give me his number. I'll call him. So I call him up, and he's on the other end of the so phone. So how did he pay you on the, in the first place? Well, they, his his accountants paid it. Oh, okay. He, he probably said, buy that drum. Right. You know? Right. E- either way, so I, 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 he's on the phone. So I go, yeah, I'm, I'm the guy that sold you the drum. I don't know. I didn't not even think. And I go, can you hear this sound? And I go, I, I, I'm right. I wrote void on the check, but I'm going to rip it up over the phone for you. So I ripped it up in little pieces and he goes, thanks for your honesty. Hey, that's and, cool. And, and I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, and then I got off the phone and a couple of days well, later, I'm know. thinking, and I look back and I'm in the reverb thing and right. Cooter, who's right. Cooter? And then I look it up, I'm going, somebody used to start talking about him. Like, that's who that was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I spoke to that guy on the phone. Well, that's cool though. It was interesting. Yeah. I had, I don't, you, you probably don't know, you know Joe Delaney from Wallingford, from my area? No. Like a rock guitarist. Okay. Like Mr. Rock. And um, similar story. He was around, he lived in L.A. back and forth and was here and there. And I forget the story of how he ended up with a guitar head. I don't know what it was. No. But he realized that it had belonged to Eddie Van Halen. Oh, jeez. And it was customized. It was it was a piece of Eddie Van Halen's. That he ended up... I don't remember the story, but, yeah. but he didn't steal it. He yeah. ended up with it and realized that it was ill-gotten. Oh, okay. And he just was like, I sh- probably shouldn't... I shouldn't have this. Eh. Was it probably... Eddie's probably looking for this. <laughs> so he got in touch with... Because he's in the biz. He yeah. reps for company. And he managed to get in touch with Eddie's people. That's and said, I have this thing. If he wants it back, like, I have it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. And, um, and he said, Eddie called him. Like, bring. Yeah. Called him on the phone. And same thing. Just said, you know, what do, what do you want? Okay, you know, what do you he, want he, he for He was it? like, okay, what do you want for it? Yeah, right. And Joe's like, nothing. Nothing. I want you to have it back. Yeah, You're my hero. Exactly. I don't, I'm not going to jack you up. <laughs> exactly. You know. And because of that, you know, because Eddie was, like, coming on strong, like, Okay. Yeah, you know, yeah. What's it going to take? What's it going to take to get? And he was like, "No, back. no. I just want you to have it." Yeah. So I don't remember. I think it, I don't want to get the story wrong. If Joe ever hears, this, I think Eddie gave him something. Yeah. But at any rate, be, once Eddie realized he was cool and just said, "Well, how'd you?" Well, I play. You know. Now they're talking guitars. 
And he talked to Eddie for years. That's he said he would just randomly call him up and they would, yeah, they yeah, would yeah. just shoot the yeah, shit. Yeah, I just bought a new pedal, you know. Because he wasn't pedal. a jerk. Yeah, well, yeah. Be, be, because, like yeah. I'm saying, you know, you, well, you didn't know who Ry Cooter was at that moment. Yeah. But Ry Cooter's going, thanks. Because right. anyone else would have said, Ugh. Well, I, I, you know, I'm sitting there going, well, we're not. Thinking about cashing the check, and I'm like, eh, that, that, that's wrong. That, this got to be this. And then I looked at, like I said, I looked it up, yeah. and I'm going, oh, that's what this is. I'm right, because it was the same. At first, I'm amount. looking at it, I'm going, oh, this, this, something's tricky because I sold the thing in April. Yeah. The way my mind works. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forgot about April by time. Well, I, so I guess sometimes it pays to be a nice guy. Now, well, if you ever course. needed anything from Ry Cooter, you could call it in. But at least he doesn't say there was some scumbag in, yeah, in, yeah, in Connecticut. Yeah, Connecticut who sold me, me a drum, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. It, but that that's what happened with them. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> I can't remember. But, like, I would we would sit around and go, all right, here's a list of questions for next time you talk to Eddie. Find out, you <laughs> know, who, what, how, the, you know, whatever. That's too funny. And he he told me things about the band's inner workings. I honestly don't even really remember, but oh, okay. I mean, he told me things that I couldn't even really tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like what happened with whatever. Why they yelled at each other over something. Yeah, something or, or something. Whatever. Who just knows? The inside straight. Yeah, it, you know, the drama that happens inside of music. Yeah, especially with brothers or I, siblings or whatever. Yeah, I can't imagine that. There's enough. Yeah. All it takes is an ego to to cause that type of. I guess. Yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. I don't know. I'm not a uh, not a drama person. No. Me to me, the drama belongs to soap operas. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but I guess it pays to be a decent person in a way. I mean, you weren't like, oh, let me let me uh, take advantage of this scenario. No, well, and get paid twice. No, but like nobody, nobody should do that. Nobody would do that. Well, well, if most you, normal people. Well, most. I mean, could you if you could cover your rent, just freaking cover it. Like, what what's that going to do I've for been you? That's I've been cover. hungry before. Right. Yeah, well, that's I what mean, I'm saying. So, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna you know jack right up for twenty three hundred bucks. What's that? That's going to get you two months down the line or well, whatever. Well, it'll you know. bite you in the ass sooner or later. That's what. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm thinking yeah, too. Yeah. Exactly. Why. It pays, and then you know Eddie. Oh, so postscript, and then yeah. I will stop. Yeah. Um, oh, that's right. That's how when Van Halen reformed in whatever, whenever it was, it was Wolfie. It, but it was David Lee Roth. It was everybody oh. but Michael Anthony when they reformed and they they did. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, they no. did. They did. I think it was two thousand seven or eight. They did a thing. And um, they needed a bass player. We went. No, we went on Eddie's dime. Okay. Joe called me and goes, huh. we, I got four tickets to Worcester. And we went to Worcester oh. and saw Van Halen. Yeah. You know, we didn't get backstage. Is but is center um, um, Worcester Centrum. Yeah, or the Worcester. Centrum. Okay. But I think Eddie told Joe. Yeah. When, if we ever. It, yeah. If there's anything I can do for you, I think that's what it was. Next time you it. come into town, and so then give me some tickets. When Van Halen he, reformed, he ring, yeah, and yeah. next thing I, next thing he, he goes, we're going to see Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was fun. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's like one of, one of John's friends, my friend John Blumenfeld, um, the guy, the drummer. Um, one of his good friends. Every once in a while, he'd go to like a concert. And mm -hmm. The guy calls me up one night uh, out of the blue. He goes, "You ever seen John Prine?" Oh. I'm like, no. He goes, I'm going to come get you. We'll go to New York uh, to Levon, Levon Helm's place nice. or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to go see John Prine. Why not? That's cool. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah. And it was, it, I've never, you know, really understood who John Prine was, you know, because, you know, I'm just not like that. I don't follow people. Right. And then you get up there and you're going, oh, my God, that's who this guy is. And yeah. God, he was old. And this was like. Yeah, he passed away recently. Sure. Right, within, I don't know. The last but, couple of years. Yeah, yeah, but it was about five years ago, maybe. Okay. Interesting, though. Yeah. Because, you know, I never correlated on any of these things. Yeah, yeah. Just play a lot of the music. Yeah, yeah. So you're not like a geek like I am that knows every... That's uh, that's what I, I I admire about you because I you know and I know other people that are like oh they pick up the album and go yeah what's his face and and then everybody that played on it and everybody I don't know why I'm like that well it's, it's just, just one of those things I just get like probably that. the way I am w with the book thing like I learn songs uh, right recently you know I've been right. learning songs but I I just I I write them down I write them down I write mm -hmm. them down I practice them and then I memorize it yeah and once I lock it in. And I've done it enough times, then I can deliver. 
Yeah. And later on, it just keeps getting better the, every time I play it. You know, I can I can deliver it nicer, or uh-huh. or figure out another way to pass it through. So kind of start thinking, and this is one thing that happened when I started playing with Lisa. Uh, recently, uh, I've sang more than I had in the past. Okay, but she's really good at harmonies, and I'm finally getting my harmony thing together where you can hear where to be. So and we're sharing songs because for some reason she doesn't want to be the front person all the time. Okay, she's just one of those people. She doesn't have that ego that she needs to be yeah. that, that way and i'm the same way so mm-hmm. we kind of fit well together i go okay we'll just share the duties yeah 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 and and it's cool because i'm copping a bunch of songs for my for my solo stuff yeah, so I yeah, yeah have yeah. something new to play at the uh, pine loft every week <laughs> yeah that's cool uh, and that's different from the terry show yeah, oh way different because terry's more um she doesn't do it uh covers as many Oh, okay. Terry's about I got the original. I got you. So it's a whole different so thing. So it's a whole different thing. And we're yeah. about covers. And we do a couple originals. In fact, um, I got some studio time logged for February. And uh, Lisa and I are going to do it. We got to get our thinking together. And it's funny because she's like, I'm, I'm used to being thrown in the fire. You know, yeah, Terry, yeah. Terry, you go, I, I, I wrote this song this morning. And oh, we're going to play it at the Buttonwood tonight. And that she tells me at the Buttonwood t- yeah, right, two, right. two minutes before we're going to play the song. So oh, you boy. have to kind of like make something up. Wow. But at the same time, and, and Lisa, she wants to know what the schedule is. She's like a, like Famous Jane. They, they have the set list. This mm-hmm. is the set list. Yeah. So some people need to know that order. Yeah. And I, I, I don't mind, you know, you throw the song list on the floor and we're going to start somewhere in the middle and jump around. Yeah. This. That doesn't wow. bother me. But yeah. some people want to know the order. And the other times, there are songs that we make sure we flow from one to the next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess it's all different. Yeah. I don't, it's all the same to me. Yeah. I have a problem. I One of my pet peeves playing gigs is nobody tells me what the song is. Oh. I hate that. Like when you're winging a gig and then oh. they all get together. And I'm just like, hello, yeah. do you yeah. want to tell me what the song is? So Thank that you. I know. So I don't. Exactly. Like, and the song will start and I'll get halfway through it and go. Oh, I know what song this is, and I'm not even playing it right. I'm just like, exactly. tell me, tell no. me the name of the song that we're playing. Like, even I need if to I think don't know the do. song, tell right. me the name of the song, and maybe it's maybe it is one that I know out of the thousands of songs that are really. Well, I want to know what to what to think about playing, but, but I guess in their mind, that, they, they don't. They think about what key, what key, and then they're off. And I'm just like, I don't need to know what key it is, but I would like to know what the, song it is. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing too. And I, I've, I've done, gone through the same thing. Yeah. People, they start a song and then all of a sudden they'll start singing. I'm like, that's what song you're playing. Yeah. I'm playing the wrong bass line. Yeah, right. You right. know, same yeah. thing, same yeah. thing. You're like, uh, uh, what do you, why, why didn't you just say you were going to play that song? I yeah. mean, some songs just, you know, some blue stuff and yeah. stuff like that. The count is the count. The feel is the groove. Yeah. There we go. We, we, you know, you're going to lay in. I mean, then there's other songs that are like, even in the blues world or any other, the, anything else. I want to know, you know, I'm not going to play cross cut saw and go boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you know, right. I'm not going to play it like that. Right. No, I know. Yeah. Well, that's one of the. Pet and at least, at least most people will bark out a, a rhythm, even if they're not. Right. Which is okay. Yeah. Play a song, but play it, you know, t- at least yep. tell, tell them, give them the drummer a clue as to what the groove is supposed to sound like. Right. And then when they start, s- s- same thing, they start singing the song and you're going, oh, geez. And yeah. it, have you ever corrected yourself? You know, it's like, oh, yeah. that song. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, always. Yeah. Always. always yeah. Always exactly. And then the same thing with me. And I'm like, I'm playing the wrong bass line. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, that song. So it's like, well, eh, I, I kind of manipulate my way into playing the right bass line again. I suppose it all depends on what the gig is. You yeah. know, I mean, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind. Hey, be- I played um, Little Wing one night. The yeah. guy goes, we're going to play Little Wing reggae. Oh, boy. I'm like. Why? But it worked, and it was cool. Yeah. But it was like, yeah, it, you know, it was kind of work, but at least the drummer knew a reggae feel. Yeah, yeah. And I knew yeah, so how, how to stay out of the way. Yeah. But it, it worked. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Something weird. Yeah. However, you know. Rocky and Bullwinkle meet the blues. Yeah, right. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. All right. What else you got? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got. Ah, oh, good. We got a couple of minutes. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm surprised. I mean, I'm we, surprised we lasted this long. We already did the um, the wrap up questions last time. Did you think about them anymore? I don't. Oh, I always think were. about those things even more. Of course. Oh yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. And and um, you know, more albums to add to the list. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Well, remind us what the last ones were. Do you know? Oh, I I kind of I remember. I like remember. Red Clay. You probably didn't look that one up. Freddie Hubbard. No. Freddie Hubbard. You should okay. look that one up because right. that's that's um, Lenny White's on the drums. Okay. I swear it, on that album. Lenny White does not repeat in one lick. Oh, wow. Throughout the whole album. Okay. Yeah. And back to the VSOP quintet uh, I told you about at the end of the last interview. Uh, that's a live show. Tony Williams. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, it, if, if you're not into the jazz, then then you're not going to dive I'm lim- into I'm it. I'm limited, yeah. you know, when it comes to that, but yeah. I'll give it a try. But, yeah. And back to, you know, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, those type of bands. Sure. The prod rocks. Sure. You know. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's your thing. Yeah. One of your things. Well, yeah, yeah, I was always into the fusion thing. Yeah, yeah. But it's funny because uh, here's another one that you probably wouldn't expect, Four Way Street. I forgot all about Four Way Street, Crosby, Stills, and Nash and Young. Oh, yeah. It's just, a, it's just a classic, you know, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not my thing either. Not your Sorry. thing either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, I know. <laughs> like, it's a thing. I have a lot of things, but there's just... That, that's about. not that one of them. Like, your Zeppelin... Sail your wooden ship out of my... Where I am. Just keep sailing it. <laughs> hippies keep it moving not my thing <laughs> yeah um god bless them but just not my thing well yeah it's like like the grateful dead show thing you know i what? i saw Gr- grateful dead once at colt park and it was pretty funny because this one guy wouldn't sit down and his friends kept barking at him and then he finally fell onto their styrofoam cooler sure and all the beer went everywhere and everybody stole all their beer right, right, right. in a matter of seconds and that's when they proceeded to beat yeah, the yeah. friend up a all bit. the all that peace and love, yeah, yeah peace yeah, and love, yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, you know, everybody's got something. But yeah, I could never get into Crosby, Stills and Nash. Sorry, I don't usually volunteer my opinions about stuff because I can't explain why I like what I like no. or why I don't. So it's not. I don't think that anything is bad. Well, that's like one uh, but, drummer I know. He says as soon as he hears Grateful Dead, he knows what it sounds like and he can't stand it. Well, you know. simple as that. He just he's like a you know. Yep. That's why they put knobs on the radio so you <laughs> can turn the station. Yeah, yeah. Move on to the things you don't like. Yeah. But we were into the heavier like uh, Steppenwolf mm. and and yeah, yeah. you know uh, Paranoid. Yeah, sure. Uh, all that stuff. Do you know about King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard? No. <laughs> oh man. Oh God. You would love that band. Oh okay. So. My younger nephew, it's kind of, I guess it's in the jam band realm, okay. is it, as in it's not mainstream. Mm. Um, they're Australian. They're young-ish, but they're just like endlessly, they made at one point, like one of their gimmicks was they made, I don't know, it was five or six albums in a year. Oh, God. Like they were like, we're going to, you know. They, they just they, wouldn't bang it up. They do literally... So their thing now is, I mean, they, I don't, you know what, I don't want to speak out of turn. I don't mm. remember how many albums they have, but it's, you know, yeah. it's in the 20s. You know? Really? Yeah. And they've been together since 2000. You know. all, all the albums, like the same song? No. Over and over. So here's the thing, is they will do absolutely any style that you could ever even think of. Huh. And then within three months, they're on to something else. Okay. Like, they're, well. th- since I tuned into them, and then I went back to the beginning. Yeah. Um, it's not even the same band anymore. Not even the same band. They did... Same players, but not music. Th- they did one that was kind of like, you know, I don't want to say like Steely Dan, but that kind of slick shuffle, the, you okay. know, with, with nice chord. They, so the whole album was about chord changes. Kind of like... The album yeah, was e- called Changes. So uh, they're, okay. they're focusing on... Yeah. They, made, they did this one album where each song was a different mode. Okay. You know, yeah, so, yeah. so they're into concept. That's but, true. But, but they did like changes. They did like this, you know, album that focused on chord changes. Yeah. And then the next album was like the heaviest metal, the heaviest hardcore record ever that's, of, of all time. That's amazing. And then the next record was like a synth pop record. Like you're just like, whatever. Huh. But anyway, they, th- but they. What do they flip a coin and go, what are, this, what are, this is our approach this just, time around. Yeah. They just have a bunch of things. Yeah. But they can, they can, anyway, my point is with you, they can get very, very proggy. Okay. Like the metal stuff was like, I'm like the whole album, I'm like, where's one? 
I don't even know where one is. Like, the whole it, thing was a mess. Yeah. But it was great. You know, I'm just okay. like, oh, okay, these guys are insane. Yeah. So if you want to hear new prague type of music, start delving into some of their stuff. And yeah. you, you'll, they have so many things. You'll find something that you like and go, oh, yeah, I like this. And yeah. it's it just insane. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. That's great. Well, it's, uh, but that's what makes the world go around. It's the way kids learn the, these things. Too, yeah, too. yeah. And, and Barb was talking about that. You know, you go on YouTube, you find anything. Right. In a second. Yeah. You know, it, that's, it's cool. It's a yeah. cool thing, you know. But yeah, King Giz, you got, you got, if, if, you, if you want to get your prog on, okay. they have their moments, you know. I, I mean, you know, they, d they don't really have like a great singer, you know. Like there's, there, there's elements <coughs> that they kind of, you know, that it's just like, oh, okay. Yeah. But they're really talented and huh. they're really good. But but I when you say prog, that's lately because I've been into them. That's that's what I'm what I think of is that huh. band. It's okay, kinda crazy. I have but to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, if you say as old people like us tend to, there's no good music nowadays. Not true. Uh, you you Not gotta true. you gotta find it. You have to look for it. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And I even heard of that. Like they're yeah. headlined at Red Rocks or whatever for multiple days in a row. So they're they're doing okay. Huh. And I just think how many bands. What's Red Rocks? What's that? Red Rocks is um, a, a world famous venue in Colorado. Oh, okay. It's like uh, huh. s surrounded by prehistoric. Oh. Rocks, you don't know. Oh, I, I, I think yeah. I know what you're talking about yeah. now. Uh, uh, some and I don't group. remember what the capacity is, but it's yeah. a big, you know. It's a cool, yeah. 10,000, Didn't 8, Jeff Pivar play in there? Everybody time? has played there yeah. at some point. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a bigger gig. Yeah. Uh, and so it's just a wicked, wicked uh, uh, venue, though, yeah. to get in that situation. Well, my point yeah. is they're not playing at the yeah. the, the, at the yeah. gigs where, you know, they're, yeah. they're on the next level. Yeah, they're, they're not playing at the Russian it. lady. <laughs> right, right, right. Um. All right, we could go. You ready to go? Well, yeah, I'm ready to go. Ish. Yeah. Okay. You know, anything else you want to add? Uh, what else? I appreciate you coming. I yeah. was kind of. I was. No offense. I'm glad because you were going to come back anyway. I was but I was kind of scrambling, and then when you reached out, I was like, "Boom, let's do it." You know, it's one of those things. Just like last week at the Pine Loft, one of the guys hasn't come in like a couple months. He's having some issues, whatever, building a house and all these kind of things. And I'm sitting in the car for a couple of minutes. I'm thinking, I haven't seen him. Who walks in the door? Yeah, there he like is. this morning, I grabbed my coffee cup and uh, oh, all right, I'm gonna Parker. call that jerk. Yeah. See what Text he's him doing. today. Yeah. See who's gonna, who's he's gonna be interviewing tonight. Yeah. Well, yeah. I was. It's Tuesday today. I was gonna kick it to Thursday because yeah. I'm scrambling, and then I was like, well, let's just do it. Right. Yeah. You want to get the holiday thing? Happy holidays to you. Yeah. You and too. Everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Everybody out there. Yeah. Peace on earth. That's what I say. Uh, hopefully, you know? we're trying to find that. Yeah. Try we don't. It. We don't want to talk about the news because you're uh, right. No, no, no. All right, Rob. I'll let Terry write it. a song about it. Yeah, right. Yeah, probably, probably. Yeah, peace to all the world, please. Y yes, please. yes, yeah. Hurry up. Yeah, hurry up with the peace. Well, I keep thinking, um, and um, not to get religious on you, yeah, but yeah. Jesus has got to be coming. He's, somebody's got to come save us. Yeah, somebody's got to do something about this. Yeah, I would hope. You I know, twenty twenty four, man. Should be a different world. You think? You think? I don't know. I don't care about flying car. Yeah. I, don't I want people to be peaceful and love each other. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right, Rob DeSorbo, thanks for coming. Thank you for having me. I appreciate Honored it. Honored to be here as always. Wow. Yeah, Good well. to see you again. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. Well, look for Rob at the Pine Loft, among other places. Someday, yeah. someday bring your combo in here. Yeah. And we'll play. Yeah. You guys will do that. All right, cool. I'm pressing the button. Good night. All right. John Pipkin Podcast, Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance, Connecticut. Over the bridge going. A little punchy today. You know who we are. And if you don't, look at the other 100. Make a Yui and find the red yeah, light. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dave will tell you how to have your own podcast right about now. Uh, hey, happy holidays. It's, uh, it's a week before Christmas, so... Uh, have a good one, everybody. Love your neighbors. Yeah, love your neighbors. And that is all. We will see you next time. Thank you, Rob DeSorbo. Thank you. See you later, kids. If you'd like to start your own podcast, give us a call at 
Connecticut Valley School of Music and Dance. Our professionally designed podcast space is here for all your recording needs. Rent out our studio to do interviews with up to four people to record audiobooks, social media content, and all other recorded material. Our rentals include a private studio along with our professional-grade podcasting equipment and We can customize your output to whatever your needs are. We also have green screen capabilities, which will expand to uh, video capability if you so wish. So check us out here at convalley.net forward slash podcast.